Okay, a square is a parallelogram with all sides congruent in four right angles. Therefore, we can call it regular because regular means all sides and all angles are congruent. A square is also a rectangle and a rhombus. So because of the parallelogram piece, I have a colored pen so I can put a different check. A parallelogram has opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, not necessarily congruent diagonals for every. The diagonals do bisect each other and consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay? Why are the diagonals congruent? Because it's what special quadrilateral? The diagonals are congruent because it's a rectangle. Okay? It has four right angles because it's a rectangle. And then because it's a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular, the diagonals bisect the angles, and consecutive sides are congruent. Okay, so let's label it A, B, C, D. And as I mentioned, I apologize, it's so dark. Okay, so if you want to draw it in a different spot, you can. Let's draw in the diagonals. And they are perpendicular. So if they are perpendicular, and since the diagonals bisect the angles because it's also a rhombus, what are the special right triangles we have inside? If this is 90, because all angles are 90, when you bisect a 90 degree angle, what's your angle measures? 45. So this is 45. 45, 45, all the way around. So we have four special uh, right triangles. It's the isosceles right. Because the diagonals are congruent, this is congruent to this, which is congruent to that. We know all four sides are congruent. So take a look at that picture again, and we're going to know all the triangles. We can put the one in there. Two, three, four. So right now, I just said, what's true about all the triangles one, two, three, and four? They're congruent. What about the triangles along the diagonal? So look at the larger ones. And take a look at which ones are congruent. Because there are special right triangles, it's probably good to know on this note page as well what the relationship was for the 45, 45, 90. So on the diagonals, is this triangle here congruent to this triangle here? Yeah. And then the question is, are they also congruent to these two? Are the two along the one diagonal congruent to the other two? Yeah. So those triangles, if you want to just listen, I'll read it and you can write it. It's going to be triangle ABC. Congruent to triangle CDA. Congruent to triangle BAD. Congruent to triangle BCD. And those are all what type of triangles? The larger ones. What's that? Still isosceles right. Okay? So I'm just going to circle this. They're actually all isosceles right triangles. So number one, we filled in from the board. Okay? In our family, we have our quadrilaterals up top, I'm just going to abbreviate our parallelograms, rectangle, rhombus, and square. 
So nice and loud. Um, all rhombuses are squares. Is that true or false? All rhombuses are squares. False. All rectangles are parallelograms. True. All squares are rhombuses. True. So you, everything below it is what's above it, but what's below it is not necessarily what's above it because any parallelogram could be a rectangle, rhombus, or square. But all three of these are what's above it, a parallelogram. So let's take a look at number two. Which statement about a figure A, B, C, D would always be true? So read those statements to yourself. that diagram the correct answer? Does anyone have it? Elizabeth? Three is correct. If it's a quadrilateral, then it's not necessarily a parallelogram. Okay, it can be any quadrilateral. If it's a parallelogram, then it's not a trapezoid. That's not true. If it's a square, then yes, it's a rhombus. And if it's a rectangle, then it must be a square. No. Last one. In squares, so let's actually draw the square. D, E, F, G, D, F, it's a diagonal. E, G is a diagonal. Find the value of X. They are congruent. The diagonals are congruent, so we said 2X minus 17 equal to 28 minus 3X. To solve for X, I'm going to add the 3X over and we get 5X. Add 17 over and we get... 45 divide by 5, or, uh, yep, divide by 5, and x is 9. Number 4 says the diagonals of square ABCD intersect at point E. If the measure of angle ABD, so let's locate that. If ABD, this angle right here algebraically, is 7x or 7 minus 2x, find the value of x. Well, what is, we know what it is numerically. 45. So 45 equals 7 minus 2x. Subtract the 7, we get 38. Divide by negative 2, and x is negative 19. We have a square, bc is 5. Find bd. Oh, that reminds me. Back on this, we were going to put the relationship, or I was going to put it up there for the 45, 45, 90. Can anyone tell me what it was in terms of the legs and hypotenuse? Yes. X, 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 radical 2. So going back to this question, we do have a 45, 45, 90 triangle because in drawing the third side of the triangle, this is 5, and because this is 90, and these are both 45s. The hypotenuse BD is going to have a length of 5 radical 2. You could also do Pythagorean theorem. Okay? And then number 6, find the exact perimeter and area. So exact means in terms of a radical or a fraction. No rounding. And the 7 is this. So what's the whole diagonal? 14. What is going to be each side of the triangle? This is going backwards. When the hypotenuse is not in terms of a radical, then what is each leg? Does anyone remember or do we need to use Pythagorean theorem? What's that? Like half X squared squared. One half X radical two. So half of this is our X this time. Half of fourteen is seven, so it's going to be seven radical two. If you didn't know that, then yes, you could set up the Pythagorean theorem. So let's focus on perimeter. 
perimeter mean 7 radical 2 plus 7 radical 2 4 times, or 4 times 7 radical 2. When multiplying radicals, we just multiply, especially if we don't have a radical times radical, we're just multiplying our two constants, or the coefficient times the 4, and we get 28. The radical 2 stays. And we're in terms of inches. Area, bless you, bless you, is going to be side squared, or 7 radical 2 times 7 radical 2. When multiplying radicals, you multiply your coefficients out front. 7 times 7 is 49. Then you multiply your radicands, and that's just the number underneath the symbol. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is how many went right to this step? 49 times 2 from there. Because any radical times itself, like radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. Radical 4 times radical 4 is 4. So now 49 times 2, that's not the final answer, even though I boxed it, the area is going to be 98 square inches. And why don't you take a few minutes with the person next to you. So if you're watching the video, pause it in class. I'm going to pause it and you guys take a look at 7 with your partner. So what do we know in this picture? Who can tell us a measurement or an angle based on what's given? Where do we start? So in looking at the green triangle, we know that RML is a 90 degree angle and we know two sides. We can then use Pythagorean theorem to find the third. However, 9 is half of 18 and in the 30, 60, 90, if you want to add that triangle up here, um, when you have the hypotenuse as 2x opposite the 30 is x. And then opposite the 60 is what? x radical 3. So if this is 9, this is 18, what's ml? 9 radical 3. So that would tell me that opposite, this is a 60 degree angle, this is a 30 degree angle, and if this is 90, and if that's 60, what's this? Another 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay, some of us are really great with taking the th one third and doing it that way, but if, if you forget that relationship and at the end of the year you just use your triangle, opposite the 60 is a 9. Okay, we're looking for SM and SR. And there were three different types of, uh, not types, they're all the same type, 30, 60, 90, but there were three different relationships we put on the study card. All you need to know is opposite the 60 is a 9. And opposite the 60 is supposed to be a radical 3, something radical 3. So if you actually set them equal to each other, you can solve for x. How do you solve for x? Divide. And x is equal to 9 over radical 3. We can't leave our denominator as irrational, so we rationalize it by multiplying by 1 in the form of uh, radical 3 over itself. And we end up with 9 radical 3 over 3, and 9 over 3 is 3. So there's the 1 third radical 3. So SM, okay, um, or actually we just found the X, and which is the X, SM or SR? Yeah, I just said it. So this is 3 radical 3, and then what do you get for SR? 6 radical 3. So SM, 3 radical 3, and SR, 6 radical 3. And our last page is the proof in terms of coordinate geometry, and you can see it's pretty much filled out. Okay, so I don't want us to actually go through and do all the calculations, but I do want to discuss the proof for showing a quadrilateral is a square. Now remember, the method to show it's a rhombus, okay, so going right to here is all four sides congruent, right? You could go the path of parallelogram rectangle square, but you'd have to show it's a parallelogram, then you'd have to show it's a rectangle, then you'd have to show it's a square. 
So the easiest way to do it is to show it's a rhombus. So show all sides congruent. And then what's the difference between a rhombus and a square? All angles are congruent, they're all 90. So to show that a quadrilateral is a square, you first show it's a rhombus, okay? And then show the rhombus is a square using one of the following methods. So you can show that you have a right angle, which we just talked about. So we want to use slope. So show that the slopes of adjacent sides are negative reciprocals. And then that means adjacent sides are perpendicular and we have a right angle. Or another difference is to show the diagonals are congruent. Okay, that would require you to show that both diagonals have the same length or distance. So down below is a question with the work done for a proof. It says quadrilateral ABCD has coordinates that are given. So let's label negative 4, negative 1 would be A. 1, 3 is B, C is 5, negative 2, and D is 0, 6. So to show it's a square, I use distance to show it's a rhombus. So what are all the distances? What's the square root of 5 squared plus 4 squared? That would be radical... Yep, 25 and 16, 41. And remember, your conclusion has to do with the property of a rhombus. So I'm just going to make a note here that equal lengths um, means all sides congruent. And the property of a rhombus is going to be since all four sides are congruent, then quadrilateral ABC is not necessarily a square, but we know it's a rhombus. Now we're going to use slope to show the rhombus is a square. So I'm using slope of which two sides? So now I know this is congruent to this, congruent to this, congruent to this, which you don't have to mark in your proof for the state. And remember, this is actually optional sometimes, so you don't even have to do this. It's just good to graph it so you can check your calculations. I'm looking to show that the right angle is where? What vertice am I showing in my work? The right angle's at B. So I'm looking at the slope of AB and BC to show that angle B is a right angle. The slope of AB is what? Doing that calculation, I've already got it set up. Four fifths. The slope of BC. Yes. And this just reminds me, in looking at some of your homeworks, I've been looking at some of your conclusions and take a look at my comments. Some of you are saying, since the slopes are this, that means sides are congruent. No. Slope tells you whether segments or sides are parallel or perpendicular. Distance is going to show you congruency, so be careful how you write it. And I'm going to make a little note here that since the slopes are negative reciprocals. What does that tell me about AB and BC? AB is what to BC? Perpendicular. And the property is that it's a rhombus with a right angle. So I'm going to add to that with angle B a right angle. And that's the symbol. And you can use the symbol. So I'm going to say since Rhombus ABCD has one right angle, then it is a square.